smelt this. Dio, Dio Savage? He didn't even put it in a glass, he drank it straight out of the bottle, oh my god! He didn't even, he didn't even put it in a glass! I need to come back. <sighs> yes! Fucking roll on the 19th! Ah! Should have came back ages ago. Can't wait to hear him rip the piss out of Dior. <laughs> oh yeah. Hey guys, Lex here with another fragrance video. So today we're covering a classic from the 60s, 1965's Aramis by Aramis. So, from what I was reading, this was an exclusive at Harrods. It was first released, and I believe it was released by Estee Lauder, who can go fuck themselves because they like to reformulate everything. Cunts, just saying. So anyway, um, Harrods exclusive. <laughs> surprise, surprise. And um, yeah, it was an instant hit. This is one of the oldest scents out there. It's got a great reputation and well deserving. Now, I'm not sure if this is the latest formulation. I got this one in 2012, so it's certainly not a vintage at Debenhams. This is a 60ml bottle. So, bottle design, let's get started. How's it look? Just the camera here. Aramis there. Nice golden cap. You've also. No, I thought there was a logo there. Nope. Nice golden cap. Um, some grip there, which that looks nice. Aramis, Eau de Toilette Natural Spray, and some information on the bottom. Really nice font. I love the Aramis font. I love the fonts they used here and there. I just think it looks really classy. And it's a really nice bottle. It looks classic. It looks old school. But it's that way where it's not macho. It's gentlemanly. So this is masculine while not being aggressive. So, how's the spray on this? Not bad at all. Um, really good sprayer. So, How's it smell? A lot of people say this smells like urine. No, it doesn't. Do you want me to? Do you want me to like piss into this glass? Do you want me to piss into this glass like right now and then we'll compare the smell? Yeah, I didn't think so. So yeah, it doesn't smell like urine. It's got a very woody. It's, it's an ultimate cowboy cologne. When I smell this, I think of like like Clint Eastwood in a way, but it's not as like Clint Eastwood in a suit, not Clint Eastwood in the cowboy getup. Very cowboy, you know. When I think of when I say cowboy, I'm talking like um, the head sheriff, you know. You know, sees movies now that the um, what's the movie with them? Um, yeah, the, the head sheriff, fancy, you know, um, government guys from the west, you know, <laughs> if a uh, head sheriff and stuff, where they've got deputies with their coats on and the well tailored shirts and trousers and the fancy boots, you know, looking really cool and suave with the finest clothing and stuff. This is something they would wear. It's got a really woody, masculine, almost almost soapy vibe in there. It's tiny, tiny bit like Kuros, but more woody, definitely more woody and masculine there. Really, I say it's more masculine than Kuros, but you know what I'm talking about. Like Clint, like a sheriff deputy from you know an old western, really classy that sort of thing. Yeah, hat, perfectly trimmed moustache, you know. Long coat on, looking suave. Black horse, perfectly bred. Brand new shiny Smith & Wesson revolver. Yeah, really nice. Really woody and just a cowboy cologne. It smells fantastic. This is the latest formulation. So let's talk about performance. What performance do I get with this? I get around 10 hours. 10 to 12 hours. Normally, sometimes more, sometimes less. But normally about 10 to 12 hours longevity. Projection, it projects pretty damn well. Projects in... Um, pretty well for about the first two hours or so and then it starts to die down after that and um, first two maybe two and a half hours and it starts to die down to more um, to pretty well sort of above average and then average and then it starts to sit a couple inches above the skin and closer to the skin after that so after the first couple of hours so longevity projection not bad at all performance this one i'm going to give it about an eight out of ten maybe a seven or an eight out of ten probably an eight i'm still thinking about it but not bad so how many sprays with this one I'm going to recommend 
three to four sprays, and it depends on the weather. Colder weather, more sprays. Hotter weather, less. So yeah, not you'd want to wear this in hot weather at all. Maybe a cool evening, but not bad. I really like this one. It's a classic. I loved it from first smell. There's a story behind this one as well, which I'll tell you about later on. So yeah, about three to four sprays are just for weather. So age group with this one, I'm going to say age 40 and up. Now that doesn't mean you have to wear it at that age. I'm 23 and I wear it. Not as much um, as I, I should, <laughs> to be honest, but I have worn it quite a few times before. I've walked to my local pub once or twice. I drink in the city in the financial district. It's basically Glasgow's version of Wall Street, you know. At the Edward, no, I'm not going to say the name of the pub. I don't want anyone following me there. It's a secret. Um, shit, I gave the first name though, didn't I? Damn. Anyway, yeah, um, age group 40 and up. You can wear it younger if you want, but that's my recommendation. 40 and up. So, season-wise, where can you wear this? Spring? Yep, I think you'd wear it in spring, summer. No, no, no. Not even just one spray at the wrist. This is a no-go for summer. Autumn, winter? Perfect for colder weather. Fall? Perfect for that. Spring? Um, for spring, apply this as you would for, like, Reeve Gauche for summer. One to the wrist, one to each wrist, dab de dab It'll be fine for spring. I think this would work really nice in spring, but definitely better for autumn and winter. Situation-wise, where can you wear this? Uh, can you wear this to work? Well, I'm going to say no. However, let's say you were like, um, depends what you work as. If you worked as a sheriff in the 1800s, then yeah, no problem. Um, but um, also, if you were like a CEO who's age 40 and up, most likely you will be uh, because you've been in the business for years and years, plus your 10 years of business school at Harvard because you're a cunt. But anyway, as I was saying, um, fucking yeah. So, <laughs> CEO, you know, boardrooms and stuff. I think you could wear this, but other than that, no, I'm not going to recommend it for work. No. On a date, depends on who you're dating. If you're into uh, MILFs, then maybe. Um, I think it's worth on a date if you're going to a nice restaurant. Depends who you're dating. If the person you're dating is into sense like this, they're really into their sense, they love classic stuff like that, this will work perfect on a date. If not, do not touch it, they're better options. Clubbing, no. This is not made for clubbing. This is a gentleman's choice. You do not wear this to the club. Okay, no. Understand? No. Bad boy, no. Or bad girl, bad transgender person. Okay, I didn't say that. Not meaning to offend. Okay, there's nothing, I'm getting nothing against that. Okay, I shouldn't have said that, I should keep my mouth shut. Damn it, Lex, chat be a smug bastard. Damn it. <laughs> um, casual wear, going out to the pub, going to McDonald's, stuff like that. Um, I think it could work. Leather jackets get a masculine vibe. I think it could work if you as Austin dress in skinny jeans and a really, really tight Hollister t shirt um, with fucking fake tan, metrosexual motherfucker, spice boy prick, then no. Your balls would probably fall off. You'd spray this on and go, Oh, I feel too manly. Oh, I need my nails done again. Oh, I'm not fabulous. Fucking only way is Essex, prick. Anyway, uh, casual, it depends on you. If you're a masculine guy, jeans, leather jacket, I think it could work okay. But where this really shines is formal wear. Suit, going to a wedding. Special event where you're dressed up looking sharp. Suit, suited and booted, this is made for that. Think of that that Western sheriff's deputy, you know, with a with a fancy coat on, and he's got the suit and he's got the, the waistcoat and stuff. You know, that sort of classy masculine. That's where this shines. Suits and ties, formal wear. This is where this really shines. So yeah, versatility is not the best, but when you do choose to wear this, it will not let you down. Uh, the situation and scene have to be right. And when you do wear it, it will not let you down. It's a classic for a reason. It's still selling for a reason. So I'm going to quickly tell you about a story. I was at my caravan park with my uncle, and I was wearing Brute. My dad got me, and he was like, why are you wearing that cheap stuff? Wear this. And it was Aramis aftershave, and I'm like, yeah, this stuff's awesome. So even as a kid, I appreciated this. I must have been 16, 17, and even then, I thought this was the fucking dog's bollocks. So yeah. Anyhow, that's my review of Aramis by Aramis from 1965. It's close enough to have it, so... <laughs> Because that wasn't immature. But um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Any questions you have, leave them in the comments below. Send me a YouTube message. If you do not have a Google Plus account, you can send me a message through Facebook. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If I don't, most likely your message has went to my other folder, and I've not checked it, but I will get back to you as soon as possible. So, yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You know, like my other video, where more people were commenting than liking. 
which kind of fucking annoys me. Wow, great video! But I don't see the like meter go up. If it's a great video, then click like! Ah! <laughs> okay, I'm fine. But yeah, like, share and subscribe. Thank you for watching and keep on smelling fly.